Um, I hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, um, I'm here today to talk about a very strange subject, being that I'm being that I'm so young, um, but I'm still going to talk about this subject because it's what the Lord has laid on my heart, and whatever He lays on my heart, um, I have to do it. And this one is really something He's laid on my heart. Um, I don't know why, but he's laid aging on my heart. Although I'm, I'm only 36 years old, um, which is very, very young still. Um, my mom, my mom just had her birthday this, uh, this past week on Thursday, and Pastor Stephen Furtick had, her, had his birthday a day after my mom was on the, on the 19th, Friday. So that got me thinking of aging, and how we think of aging, um, and how God thinks of aging. God um, mentions the hoary head, which is the, the gray-haired um, head, uh, so many times in the book, um, at least twice or three times in the book of Proverbs, he talks about lifting up the hoary head, uh, he talks about how, and Paul talks about how the, how the older women should teach the younger women. And he, um, when Solomon is writing um, Proverbs, he says, listen to the instruction of a father. He says that over and over again. So it seems to me that biblically, aging is not only expected, but a gift. And somehow, in this culture, we've got it twisted um, that aging is a bad thing, and we have all these anti-aging creams, and we make uh, snide jokes about people getting older and all that stuff. And the Lord wants me to say today that... Um, your years are not me are not measured in your age. It's m measured in what you do in those years. Um, he's saying you could either waste those years worrying about your um, stretch marks and lines on your face. Or you can go out and do something with it. Like, um, you can pass on your wisdom to the young. What is really unfortunate to me is that there is hardly anyone um, passing on wisdom, real down-home wisdom, to um, people in their 30s, it used to, or 20s, um, it used to be like the grandmas and grandpas would totally uh, sit on the porch and pass on that wisdom to uh, their wisdom about cooking, about household things about life things to their younger uh, children and grandchildren. Um, but that seems to be gone now. It all seems to be about uh, self-help and 
and all, all that stuff. And the Lord is um, really saying today, if you have wisdom to share with your grandchildren or people my age, I'm talking to uh, people in their 50s and 60s and up. If you have wisdom to share, share it. Because not that time is short, but your grandchildren and your children need to know your story. They need to know what you've been through because if they don't if they don't know what you've been through, they don't know who they are because they are a part of you. So you see that grandchild going wild and you don't say anything because you're afraid to offend them or whatever. They need to know your story. They need an old fashioned, what they used to call a come to Jesus moment. They need you to pull them aside and with loving kindness, not with judgment to to guide and to steer and a lot of a lot of older folks not older folks a lot of folks that have been through the seasons of life seasons of life seasons uh, men and women they have so much to share but um, it feels to them like no one's listening and I'm here to tell you today that, uh, brother, sister, we're listening. We may, we may not seem like we're listening, but trust me, when the rubber meets the road and we need your advice, whatever you said to us will come back. Um, and because... And I also want to say to you today, your life is not over. Let me say that again. For people in their 50s, 60s, 70s even, your life is not over. It's just beginning. Like the detriment that we have to older people, we... We think in this society that age is a bad thing. We try to get rid of it with all all this tan, tan, all these tan lines and all these creams. But really, um, your age um, and what you've been through that is wisdom for people. That is wisdom for people, and that is the lines on your face and and whatever age marks you have, age spots, really signifies that you live. So it's not really the quantity of your life that matters, like how long you live. It's the quality of your life. So your you're 50 now, you're 60, you're 60 now. Uh, what has the quality of your life been uh, up until now? Um, are people getting wisdom from you or judgment? Are people learning from you or are they um, not learning from you? You have so much to share. Your life is not over because you're um, seasoned. Because the reason I like to say seasoned instead of older is because that means you've been through the seasons of life. You've seen several winters, you've seen several springs, you've seen several summers, and you've seen several falls. Like you've You've seen things, you've learned things, you've been through things, and we need you. We need to know what you've been through. The first, I was on um, what we call here in, 
Raw Note Wheels Brands, which is, for those of you outside of Toronto, uh, the disabled uh, uh, bus service. Um, and I actually was talking to a war veteran, a Canadian war veteran, and he was telling me some of the stuff he's been through. And I was like, wow. And I learned so much from this gentleman on this ride. And at the end of the ride, uh, I said, thank you for your service. And he said, you're welcome. Um, so instead of looking down on your age and thinking it's a bad thing getting older, Look at it as you're not losing things. You're losing things physically, but you're gaining things mentally. Age is supposed to bring experience. It doesn't for everybody because everybody doesn't take the lessons of their age, but it's supposed to bring experience. It's supposed to bring wisdom. It's supposed to bring um just clarity more clarity about who you are and whose you are and that is what um the lord is saying it is not time for you to give up because you are seasoned it is time for you to embrace those lines on your face know that it's uh wisdom for people like me in their 30s or 20s or even teens we need to know your story we need you we can't survive without you um like, a lot of people think it's over when they come to a certain stage in life, but it's not over. It's just a new level of wisdom that you must cross. And look at age as wisdom. Look at your, look at the number on the clock as the more wisdom you gained and the more life you've lived and share that life with those younger around you because we need to hear it we may not act like we need to hear it but we do we need to know what you've been through and how you went through it you have so much to give you have so much to give. You, d It's not time for you to give up. The Lord says live. And somebody, th somebody that's listening to me right now has stopped living and you're just existing. The Lord hasn't called you to just exist. He said that I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He's called you to life today. He's called you to, to strength today. He's called you to passion today. And yes, even though, even though you're older, he's called you to those things. It is not just for the young. It is not physical uh, uh, life, although he has called you to that, it is not physical strength, but it's emotional life and emotional strength. So a lot of somebody out there is physically alive, like you're breathing and your heart's pumping blood into your body, but emotionally you're dead. And he is calling you to rise up today. He's saying despite the number on your birth certificate, you still have life to live. You still have a job to do. You still have a purpose. 
for your family, for your grandchildren, for your children, for those around you. Life can start when you make the decision for it to start. Let me see. Let me let me say that again. Life can start when you make the decision for it to start. Life really doesn't start at birth. Uh, life, physical life, starts at birth, of course. But emotional life, I'm talking about, doesn't start at birth. Life starts when you make the decision that I'm going to live. I'm going to live with passion. I'm going to live with fervor. I'm going to live with fruitfulness. So all this nonsense about life starting at 40 and 40 is the new, the new 30 and all that. No. No. Life starts when you make the decision that it's going to start. So, you make the decision, and God helps you with it. So, now is not the time to sit back and die. Now is the time to live, and live with passion. Live with a, a spirit of exploration. Live, um... Live with a spirit of, of you enjoy the challenge. Now is the time to take life by the horns and just do what God has called you to do. And yes, you still have purpose. There still is life. And I think of the story of Sarah. If you don't remember the story of Sarah, she, her and Ab Abraham wanted a baby. And so, um, even after she went through, um, her own means to get it, um, by her servant, uh, and her servant had Ishmael, even after she disobeyed God, God still blessed her with Isaac, Isaac at 90 years old. So if God can bless Sarah at 90 years old with Isaac, what, what makes you think God can't bless you at 50? At 60, at 75, your blessing is in accepting the stage of life you're at. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't try and hide from it. Don't try and seem younger. Accept the stage of life you're at and blessings will come. Remember I said the stage of your life means your wisdom, not the number on your birth certificate? The Lord wants you to embrace the wisdom he's, he's put in, in you because of all the years you've lived. Like I said, I'm 36, so that means in my lifetime times, I have... I've collected 36 years of wisdom. Um, so if you're 55, that means you've collected 55 years of wisdom. Um, the Cicely Tyson, who died uh, recently, um, I was listening to an interview with her and Tyler Perry. Um, this week, and I was thinking, what must she had, what must she had of seen, 
what wisdom I achieved might have gained in those years. That's what's so amazing about aging. It real it you gain a lot, you've learned a lot. Every day you live you've learned something and it wasn't always easy but you're here. You're standing, you're breathing, you have your children, you have your grandchildren with you. It is not time to give up. It is time to live. It is time to go forth in what the Lord has called you to. It is time to embrace who you are and the seasons that you've been through in your life. And it is time to let us youngins know what you've been through. It is time to start talking and sharing about the wisdom. Because I know some families, uh, some seasoned people, don't like to share um, stuff with their grandchildren or children because it might be too painful. But we need to hear it as younger people. So don't be afraid to share it. We need to hear those stories. We need to uh, get those recipes passed down. We need those old school remedies. We need you. We need you, beloved. We need you. We need your wisdom. We need your love. We need your care. And if you don't know how to start, just start small. When you see your granddaughter in the kitchen try, trying to um, make a recipe, help her with it. If you, see, if you see the fact that she's struggling and can't cook, help her with it. And while you're rolling out dough with your hands and helping her with it, talk to her about how her grandfather and you met or whatever. Share with her your story. Communicate with her. And you may not think she's listening. And you may be so overwhelmed by this technology thing. You may not know anything about Facebook or Instagram, but who cares because we can share wisdom with each other because just like the aged have wisdom, the young have wisdom too. So we need to come together and share both the seasoned wisdom and the youthful wisdom because if we comp if we share and if we compare notes we will be so much richer as people if we keep to ourselves the wisdom that we have we'll, we'll never get bigger and broader but if we share with each other the wisdom that we both have will be bigger and broader because um, on the flip side, a lot of older people say, oh, that's just young people or whatever. But we have a lot of wisdom to share as well. So I think um, we need to come together and put our wisdom together and, sh and share with our grandma or grandpa how to use technology and then they can share with us how to uh, knead dough by hand and stuff like that. I think it all c comes down to uh, the gifts that we both can bring to the table. We need to celebrate the gifts at whatever stage we are, because being, being younger, we have gifts to share with you as well, 
and being older you have gifts to share with us so if we can come together and share our gifts share our talents with each other we we become richer we become stronger we become more uh well-rounded people multifaceted people and it would be just wonderful to see people uh sitting around a table grandmothers grandfathers and granddaughters and children that are five years old children that are 15 years old children that are 25 years old just sharing together um one of the sad things about today is you rarely ever see pe people of different ages and different stages sitting around and sharing together i think it's a lovely thing and i think it's something less lost that we need to bring back because we add to each other we don't take away from each other done right whatever age and stage you are you can add to the people around you you don't have to take away from the people around you don't take away from the people around you you add to those people so us young people we know technology so we can add to that your baking habits your your um your gift of wa washing clothes and hanging them on the clothesline with clothes pegs and making soup by hand kneading dough by hand and we can add the technology part so we don't take away from each other by sharing with each other we add to each other and like i said before we get, become much richer and more more round, well rounded people your life is not over until you say it's over uh, we we often say that life is not over until god says it's over that's true in one certain in one thing in one certain aspect but but it's also not over until we say it's over not physically but emotionally and psychologically so sometimes our life is not over but by the way we're living we have said it's over and and we act like it's over we act like we're just waiting to die where where god says right now this day the lord says to live he said i am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly god created you beloved to have life whether seasoned whether young whatever stage you are god created you to have life and unless you're dead there's a reason for you to be here don't stop living don't start existing don't stop living don't stop living we still need you we still love you we still want you here we need your wisdom we need you to share with us so guys i'll see you later and feel free to share this uh with anyone you think can benefit with this can can benefit from this thank you bye
Man, I see All the world looks in It seems so amazing. But falling stars don't shine. They have no place in the sky. We forget about the ones still hanging. Falling is easy, but standing takes strength. You have remained my star, and I want to thank you for staying and not leaving, for never taking the easy way out, for loving and always showing me what being a father is all about. And I want to thank you for staying and not leaving, for never taking the easy way out, for loving and always showing me what being a father is all about. And I just want to say today, um, I want to say thank you for all the seasoned people who have stayed, who have taught us, who have shared their wisdom. I spent a lot of time in this sermon talking to people who don't do that, and I just want to take a moment for pe- um, uh, to people who have done that and say thank you and say we appreciate you, we love you. Thank you for staying. Thank you for hanging in there with us when we're driving you crazy as young ones. Thank you for just loving us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for showing us God's love and light. We just want to say thank you today. Um, And I want to say your labor with us has not been in vain. We love you. We appreciate you. Although we may not say it, we love you. We love you so much. And thank you for staying with us. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for telling, teaching us what it's like to be resilient. What it's like to have stand power in your marriages and in your li- lives. Your your um your dedication to this life has been truly admirable, and we thank you. We thank you for showing us what real marriages are about. Even though it may not have been easy for 40 years, thank you for sticking with each other because that showed us how to live in our marriages. Thank you for just being in terrible situations and still having the fortitude that that you needed to persevere because we saw you, we saw you and we love you. And I always, and I will say this, the greatest testimony is not one you hear, it's one you see. So thank you for testifying to us as younger people how to live, how to live life, how to praise God in adverse situations. Thank you for showing us who we are and who you are. Who you are and who we are by your example. Because we are you. We come from you. And we've learned from you. So thank you for not only staying, but for keeping the faith. 
for showing us what prayer is, for showing us what fasting is. Because we may not look like we've seen it. We we may run from the kitchen when you start singing those off-tune hymns. But we've seen you. We've seen your fortitude. And I'll say it again. Your labor has not been in vain. And the greatest testimony is not when you hear, but it's when you see. Thanks. See you later. I want to thank you for staying and not leaving, for never taking the easy way out, for loving and always showing me what being a father is all And to people my age and younger, if you still have your grandma around, give her a big hug. If you still have your grandpa around, give him a big hug. If you still have people of of the older generation or the seasoned generation around, give them a hug. Tell them you appreciate them. Because sometimes in this society, when you get older, it might seem very overwhelming with all the technology changes, and they might not feel that they have have use. But tell tell them how much you love them. Tell them uh, how much they're useful to you. And tell them how much their wisdom has meant to you, because they need to hear it. They need to hear it. So thank you so much. See you next time. Bye. I want to thank you for staying and not leaving for never taking the easy way out for loving and always showing me what being a father is all about Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.